Hi, it's the Constant Angler here. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, popping frogs. The ones I use for the pike here in the UK um, and maybe people use for uh, northern pike over in the USA and other places. Uh, so if we start off, you know, what are they? Well, they're basically, if we look at one here, they are hollow bodied so you can see, I can squeeze that, some air will come out, don't know if you can hear that. Weedless, floating, popping lures. So why are we using these? Well, if we can't present a popping surface lure into weed with our traditional lures, hard body lures with treble hooks, we can use these lures as a weedless and, and achieve the same thing or something very similar. Um, we can chuck these into lily pads, weed beds, the harshest of environments. Um, and they float, so they'll sit on the surface and then we can make them pop along. So what types do we have then? Well, let's start off with that one then. <clears throat> no, let's start with this one. Right, this is one of my favourites, but uh, quite expensive and I have to get them from the States. This is the River to Sea Spitting Wah. Um, as you can see it's quite a large one compared to say this one here or that one there which is why I bought it I wanted something like that plus it has a big popping cup so surface area to pop there with some holes if we're looking at the detail here to help it spit a bit so it'll be a different sort of sound a pop different sort of popping sound to some of these others uh, I happen to have this in a sort of uh, bream color uh, my favorite by a long shot so far is the Booyah Poppin Pad Crasher. This is in a shad colour and I've caught pike up to, I can't remember if it's 12 or 14 pounds on this, on the surface. You can see it's got a few battle scars and it seems to have lasted a few years, which is, is good for a frog. Some shred quite easily. Um, I have one here, Abu Tormentor. Beautiful looking thing. Uh, good size, bigger than the Booyah. Not as big as the Spitting Wild, the River to Sea, but a good profile on it. Uh, it floats beautifully and it does the job. I've caught pike on it. Not on this one in particular because the first time I used one it got shredded by a pike and it was a small jack. Could have been a coincidence so I took the chance and invested in another. Uh, but I'm having to import these if I want these. Which costs a bit of money so it's a bit of a gamble. Uh, another one of interest which I recently imported is a Strike King Popping Perch. Uh, this has a, a different skirt on it if you compare it to the others here and they've got the more traditional frog skirt skirts on like that tormentor this is actually um plastic more like this i would presume it's the same material as the body it's hollow again and as you can see it's got a shad picture painted on the surface there and also underneath but it's basically the shape the same profile as these others but the same size as the tormentor actually what that will turn out to be like, I don't know. <coughs> Still got its popping, uh, excuse me, cup there. Um, seems well weighted as well. They usually have a belly weight here, most of these lures. That's, there's one there on the tormentor, it's a bit further back. Uh, same there, circular one there. That helps them sit right in the water. <coughs> excuse me. Then I have some cheaper lures. I mean, this is, sorry, before we go cheaper, this is the, another Booyah in a more traditional colour same with that there and then you know this is an aliexpress special don't expect the hooks to be as good they're rusting a little bit um it's nice soft plastic you don't want hard plastic because the fish have to be able to crush it um but it was a couple of pounds off aliexpress and i just like the look of it um a couple more here they look a reasonable size with a single uh, skirt coming out the back something different bit of a different color too so black and a red there his brother just a different color but same thing quite cheap you know, two three pounds each it's very cheap for frogs talk to you about the cost of the others in a second um this one I, i'm not sure what this is i've forgotten i bought this a while back but it has caught pike I lent it to a mate and he caught a, a couple of nice ones on it actually whilst i didn't catch anything that day um yeah that's a brown sort of lure i can't remember if you know then post in the comments and tell me i'm, I'm sure some of you do uh, so if we talk about sort of cost Trouble with these things is they might be sort of eight nine pounds, but then you've got to pay import tax. So you're looking at about 
somewhere around 15 pounds to get that frog into this country now if it lasts catches me a few fish I don't see a problem with that because I'll pay that for some of the uh, other lures that I use when pike fishing uh, the tormentors are working out somewhere around the same each same as the strike pose uh, the um, booyah popping frogs tend to be a little bit cheaper some people do ship them without uh, adding too much cost on so we've we looked at a few types um, size wise I wouldn't go for anything less than or equal to sort of you can go greater than or equal to 65 millimeters that's what I'm trying to say don't go any smaller than 65 millimeters although I'm not saying they won't work you want a bit bigger presence for pike those those will catch you chub and perch though so color so black when would I use that I use that in low light conditions cloudy days um, cloudy water uh, darker water uh, AM maybe PM um, when light levels are low um, more natural colors we're using in the middle of the day bright conditions clear water fish are obviously getting a better look at these things and uh, they need to look more like whatever it is they're hunting um, shad colors uh, when there's bait fish around um, if there are bait fish topping particularly sort of in the evenings this one I've had good success with this shad sort of color for pike hunting in the surface layers um, another uh, color which I don't have there is white that works in a lot of conditions it's uh, pretty good anytime um, you can use bright colors I haven't really got any here I suppose this is fairly bright isn't it um, sometimes it's just a case of the color and the action are annoying the fish so uh, go for a bright color see if it works nothing else is working try it so retrieves well the first thing you want to do once you've casted your um your lure out is to leave it for about five seconds you want the rings in the water to dissipate the reason you don't uh retrieve it straight away is there might be a fish that's recognized that's in it heard it turned around to investigate and if you pull that away you could be pulling it away from the fish and it might not be interested so leave for about five seconds let the rings dissipate and then a couple of twitches or a couple of pops in this case leave again and see what happens after that start your retrieve and all you're looking to do is find a cadence on the day so a combination of speed of retrieve and how much it pops um, to find what the fish are interested in on the day um, so you get yourself a bite what do you do well the thing you don't do is strike at the surface action wait until you see you feel not see it's all feel feel the weight of the fish then strike hard and strike up because you're having to set these thick gauge heavy hooks these are generally three size three o's or above and you need beefy gear to set these hooks and a good hard strike but wait until you feel the weight of the fish because the fish is picking this up turning and going down and that is when you want to strike hard and if we're looking at hooks here let's see what we got if we look on this river to sea you can see the hook points are quite straight there at the moment and they're protected by the body so quite weedless if i get this abu tormentor and put alongside it you can see i've angled these hooks up at 45 degrees and they're sticky sharp and when that body's depressed they go in at a better angle you, you hook more it's a um, compromise between snagging the weed and stuff but hooking more fish you bend these with your fishing pliers you can bend them back forth on the day but watch the hook points you don't want to ruin the hook points i tend to set them on about 45 degrees <clears throat> so there's your striking uh, another thing we can do to our frogs is uh, sometimes the fish strike short so what I tend to do with skirts is pull them up to the head and then chop them uh, short there so that one's kind of been done uh, if we look at this one I uh, haven't done that yet so there's a decent amount of that to be cut off that will prevent them striking at the skirt all the time and not getting the hook um, so there you go uh, gear then we're talking rods well you can use your standard pike gear with your bait casting setup or your spinning setup that you have as long as it's a heavy setup you don't want too heavy a setup you don't want your 300 gram rods your 200 gram rods you want something a rating of around 80 to 100 grams something like that 
Um, it's got to be stiff. It's got to be powerful. Uh, really uh, a fast action. The American bass anglers are uh, something like their pitching rods. Uh, what you have to think is, you know, they have dedicated frogging rods, but bass don't get as big as pike. And to pull a pike out of the weed is going to be harder than pulling bass out of the weed, um, should you be unfortunate and it, it's getting its head down into that weed. So, yeah, I currently use an, an original Savage Gear MPP greater than 100 gram rod. Um, but don't go any lower than 80 gram rating on the rod and make sure it's the fast action. You need to be able to pull those hooks in and you need to be able to get those fish out of that weed for their own safety and you not to be in a mess and be considering swimming in the canal or wherever you are to retrieve your lure, help the fish and get in distress. We don't want that. Um, reels, you can use your standard bait casters or, or spinning reels. Um, you want something with a really good drag, which you already have. Things like your Abu Tranks, your Cast King, Spartacus Maximuses that I use, your Abu Revos. Um, it's the drag you want. I've got something that's about 25 pounds of drag. You need something like that. You know, the Citrix. Um, yeah, good reels from good manufacturers. Solid, reliable, strong. Gear ratio is not so important. We're not in a competition. We're not looking to make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of casts contact with more fish we just want something strong that's going to get that fish back in um, to add to that your line it's I use braid I wouldn't use anything else nothing less than 55 pounds you can go heavier if it casts the distance you want then fine uh, traces I suggest titanium or wire no less than 40 pounds um, <clears throat> higher if um, needs be certainly no lower uh, fluorocarbon um, I wouldn't use fluorocarbon in this instance I'm not knocking people to use fluorocarbon but there are reports that or so it said that fish can bite through fluorocarbon um, if there's any occasion when that is going to happen then it's when you're surface fishing because if you imagine you're pulling this out of the way it's on the surface they come up to the lure and then come down on it and then very often they miss the lure that's why you get so many missed aborted takes and things like that and they could bite through your leather they could at any time really i suppose but i would say when you're surface fishing they could certainly do that and fluorocarbon sinks anyway so you it's going to pull your lures down the same as wire which is a problem we have the wire pulls these things down so you need to fish generally with your rod tip high halfway at 45 degrees or so to keep your wire out of the water or on the surface to keep your lure going at the right angle. Um, sorry for any background noise, I've been forced to go outside and do this today um, due to lighter conditions. But hopefully I'm coming through loud and clear and uh, this has been some of some use for you. Um, I will be doing a modifications, frog modifications video. I will also be doing a walking uh, frog, walking the dog frog video so look out for those and uh, I shall do some buzz frog videos and paddle tail frog videos um, as well so keep your eyes peeled for those thanks for listening hope that's of some help for you please like and subscribe and in these current times stay safe in the UK at the minute we can't go fishing stay safe look after the NHS look after yourself and others we'll go fishing again at which point We'll all know what we're doing and probably have far too many lures. So, cheers for constant anger.